show you finished rounds 10 to 12 and you've joined them with that treble so you're here you've moved the stitch so round 13 one single crochet into that loop now remember if you want to check round 13 or any other rounds go to www.crochetlovemelbourne.com the written pattern with a lot of photos uh, is there this round 13 is a little bit more complex so you might want to look at the video and the written pattern and photos hopefully between them you'll be fine so you've done one single crochet into there you're going to chain six so start of round 13 chain six single crochet one into the next loop one two three four five six to the next loop we're going to single crochet what I want you to remember with round 13 is that you have to turn your work twice so that's the main thing that you need to remember so after you've done that you turn your work after the initial chain six turn your work around slip stitch back into that loop you've just made then chain three then double crochet nine into this loop that you've just made so one two so you're actually working backwards three four five six seven eight nine so including that initial chain you've got ten here then after that you're going to single crochet at the bottom here near the stitch marker into that initial single crochet then you're going to chain four one two three four and you're going to turn your work around again so you're turning your work twice so now you're going the normal way so you miss we need to have five loops here we're going to put one DC in the end and then we're going to skip a stitch one two skip three four five so at the start we just skip the first one then double crochet into the second stitch then chain one skip one stitch double crochet again chain one skip one stitch and continue along like that chaining one skipping a stitch double crochet until in the final one we want to be in that turning chain there right on the edge so it's a clean edge and then you've got something that looks like kind of like a little fan written pattern back into the same loop so single crochet into that same loop there that you've worked this one into you've got one there then you're going to do six chain single crochet three times so one one two three four five six two one two three four five six now if you look in the photo you'll see that there's two chain six loops between each little fan shaped that's because now after you've done this third one you're going to turn around again and work backward into that now this is what I think maybe the part that confuses people a bit so again you're working chain four or sorry chain three here and then you're working nine and then turning around again and doing your little fan shape so I'll do it with you we'll just repeat this so you've done you've made your loop 
you've turned it around, chain three, double crochet nine into this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're still going backwards. You've got that one over there. And then you're going to chain four and turn your work around again. One, two, three, four and you're gonna turn it around and you're going to do this skip one, chain one, double crochet one more time. I like to count back from here so I know I've got the right one. So sometimes a bit confusing at the start there. So if I say I've got one, skip one, two, skip one, three, skip one, four, skip one, five, I know I'm going into the right stitch here. So double crochet, chain, skip one, double crochet, chain, skip one, chain, skip one, double crochet, and the last one in the turning chain. And then chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, into the same loop that this single crochet is in. And then three more times of chain six, single crochet. And in the third one, you turn around and work back. Now we've got two of these so far. You need eight. So I'm gonna leave you there. If you need to watch back that bit again, it looks a bit funny at this stage, but we join it up in the following rounds. So I'm gonna leave it like that. See if you can repeat that six more times until you're at the end of the round, then I'll join you back at the end of round 13. We have finished round 13. I hope you went okay with it. You should have eight of these little fan shapes and they should have two loops in between them all and then one coming down from the fan. If you found that you ended up with either too many loops after you completed seven or not enough loops, I suggest you go back and frog it and you can actually, it's easy to add one loop, probably a little bit harder to get rid of loops, um, but it should work out correctly. If it doesn't, it may mean you haven't counted correctly in the past. So you need to just go back with this stitch mark and be really careful going through those 11, 10 to 12 rounds. Uh, now, round 14, we're basically going to make a round to kind of straighten out the gaps between here. But to start off round 14, we're just going to slip stitch up the side of the first little. Now, sorry, to join round 13, I have done a slip stitch in your initial stitch here into that little loop. And then we're going to just slip stitch up the side like this. So we want to get to the top of the little fan shape. It's probably about six slip stitch and you can do that one, two, three in the bottom part and three in the top section there. So you end up in the corner here. All right. And then you're going to start doing chain six and single crochet again. But the only difference with round 14 is you're going to go into the middle of the fan first. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you've got five little holes here. One, two, three, four, five. And you're going to do a single crochet into the middle, into the third one. So chain six, single crochet, into the third one, you skip two, and another chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you're going to 
go into that final space there. Like that. It could you could do it into that final loop or I just put it in the final space. Just uh, trying to remember what I did before. Yeah, actually the final loop looks better. Let's cut that. So chain six, skip two into the middle, chain six, skip two into the end loop. Another chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to skip, this is the most important bit, you skip this loop and go across into that one there. And then again, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's looking like this. So we could come up, around, down into that loop, down into this loop. We go into the second one there. And we're just going to continue doing chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, skipping to the top of the next one here and then just continuing to chain six, single crochet in the middle one there, chain six, single crochet in the last one, chain six, skipping that one and then into there, chain six, skipping that one and start again. So we're just going all the way around, chain six, and remember, if you want to look at the written pattern, you can have a look at www.crochetlovemelbourne.com and hopefully you'll get it all right and I'll see you at the start or at the end of round 14. To finish round 14, I've worked my way all the way around and when I come back to that first one, we just chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and just slip stitch into the top of that first round, the first fan there. And now you've finished round 14. It should look like this. Then the next three rounds, so rounds 15, 16, and 17, are the same as rounds 10 to 12. It's chain one, single crochet into the next loop, chain six, I'm afraid, sorry, that was a mistake, chain six, single crochet one into the next loop and repeat. So rounds 15, 16 and 17 are all the same round as you did before. So there's light at the end of the tunnel, you're getting closer to having completed your first one. One, two, three, four, five, six into the next loop single crochet repeat for three rounds i do suggest using a stitch marker to mark your starting point just so you know where that is so if you can work rounds 15 16 and 17 with chain six single crochet into each loop i will meet you back at the end of round 17. So you've just worked rows 15 to 17. You've come to the end of row 17 there. You can see it's getting very large and you're nearly at the end. So a slight difference in joining. The previous round you would have joined with two chain and then a treble. But with this round, because you're going to be working single crochets into the loop. So I'm going to work at the end of round 17, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm just going to single crochet directly into that first loop. So what you're going to do in this round, it's pretty straightforward, round 18, six single crochet into each loop and you skip that single crochet. So you're essentially sort of making the edge of the bag now almost. The next one is, so I've done one to join, so I'll do two, three, four, 
five, six, and then I'll just skip over that single crochet, go into the next loop, six more. So go all the way around. If you feel like counting, you can, but it's going to be 240 stitches. So it's going to take you a while. Stop the video now. Once you get around, just slip stitch to join round 18. And then we'll go to the final rows of this round bag part. Round 18 seems to take forever, but we're finally there. So it should look like this. You've got this kind of an edging. And then we've just got three more rounds before we do the handle. So this round, all you're going to do here is do a chain one. And then you're going to work half double crochets into every stitch. So half, just bringing through once, bringing through all three loops. That's a half double crochet. You're going to work, go all the way around. That's round 19, 20 and 21. It's all the same. So after round 21, it's going to look, here's one I prepared earlier, like this. Okay, so that's the edging. And then after that, we'll get onto the handle, decreasing at the top and working the handle, then putting it together and you're almost done. See you after you've completed round 21. Three rounds of half double crochet. Go. So you've now completed these three rows of half double crochet, which was actually 18, 19 and 20, round 20. So I'm going to move now into showing you how to make this handle. You don't have to have the handle like this. This is just how I chose to do it. If you wanted to, you could just purchase a handle, which would make it very easy because then you can just repeat what you've just done, add the handle, sew it together and you're done. So it could be a little bit easier, but this is the cheaper way and not so bad either. You can leave it like this, or I recommend sewing on some fabric on the back of the handles to make it a bit stronger because you know these market bags do get used with heavy things in them so you want them as strong as possible so let's have a look at the one i'm on to the second side here so what i want you to do first of all stitch markers are really essential in this project um, and we're going to use them again so first of all put that back in here and then I want you to count nine loops, looking at these loops below the six single crochet there. I'm calling that a loop. So I want you to count nine back from this one here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on the right hand side of that stitch marker, sorry, on the right hand side of that loop, you're going to put this stitch marker here. So what we're essentially doing is straightening this bit a bit too wide for the camera we're going to make it sort of straighter we're going to decrease the stitches in this row okay so basically you're working from the back there and we're going to decrease in a particular way so i'm going to show you how to decrease and first of all you're going to just chain three so chaining three so we're working backwards towards the other stitch marker and the back of the work is facing you so what you're going to do is you're going to start to make in the first one here, you're going to start to make a double crochet. You're going to do half a double crochet. So like that, bring one loop through and do that. So you've got half a double crochet. And then you're going to do that again. And then you've got three loops left on the hook. You're going to bring that through and you're essentially decreasing one. Then you're just going to work a double crochet 
So you continue this right along to the next stitch marker. So you're basically decreasing every second stitch. So half a double crochet and another half a double crochet. Then you're going to pull the loop through all and then work just another double crochet. So you're going to continue this decrease right along to the end of the row and that's going to make this a bit of a straighter line. So I'll leave you there for a minute. One more double crochet. So double crochet every second stitch and then you're doing a half and a half and pulling through the three loops. So continue that across and I'll meet you at the end of the row there. Right, hope you're still with me there. Let's assume that you've also done what I've done, which is completed your handle. Then what we're going to do is we're going to match it up there, right size together. Trusty tapestry needle. And you're just going to sew it very strongly on to this, okay? Strongly onto here. People often, I don't know why they ask me how I sew things, so this is how I usually sew things. Just like this. The thing is, if you put some material on the back, some fabric, you'll probably cover this anyway. So you want this to be pretty strong for the marker bag probably could have done a design where it was just joined but this is just the way I ended up designing it which I quite like I usually go two times along along and back because you want it to be pretty strong then fasten it off and I'll show you that so it's going to look like that at the front and you probably won't see the back because I'll probably cover it with fabric. Then do the same thing on the other side. Once you've done that, you make another one. Look, we can barely see it. it's taking over. It's so huge. Move the camera out a bit. Look at that. Now you're going to make another one, which I've already done. Put them together and you can either crochet around the edges or you can sew the edges. I've got the right sides together here. Leave a bit of a gap at the side here. Start about here. You can either slip stitch all the way around or you can sew. Okay, and I'll show you what the finished bag looks like in a minute. Right, we are nearly finished. Now what I've got here is I've got the two pieces right side together match them up you've got the bottom of the handle section here you count 10 stitches we're going to do the easy way of putting it together you can sew them together some people don't like sewing though so i'm just showing you one other way you can do it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten stitches because you want to leave enough so the bag can open so do this on both sides and finish 10 stitches before you get to the other side. Now all you're going to do here is just put your crochet hook through both pieces, pull your yarn through like that, pull it tight. You can sew in that end later on. And this is what I would recommend. It provides quite a nice finish on the outside too. Just keep going through, pulling through, slip stitch every stitch. You could also do single crochet, but I like the look on the other side of the slip stitch. So just keep going all the way around until you get to the other side and then finish 10 stitches before, fasten off. 
turn the bag inside out and in a minute I'll show you the completed bag. Now you can also add a fabric to here so things don't fall through the holes which I like the idea of. You can also add it to the handles. If you're not a sewer and you don't want to do that that's fine. I'd recommend that just because I've got a thing about crochet bags and things falling through. So highly recommend the fabric. Now go away if you're up to this point. Sew or slip stitch your pieces together and let's look at the final bag in the end.